episode 339 of Global from Asia. Talking about free financial self. Shlomo, globalfromasia.com slash free financial self. Let's tune in. Welcome to the Global From Asia podcast, where the daunting process of running an international business is broken down into straight up actionable advice. And now your host, Michael Michelini. Can I, is it PC to say Christmas? I'm in China. There's no Christmas here. It's like the Grinch stole Christmas succeeded in the, in the kids movie when I was a little kid. But I don't know. I, I think maybe in the bigger cities of China, it might be more Christmassy, but I, it's, I'm recording this on December 24th, Christmas Eve, 7 p.m. It's dark, no Santa in sight. My kids are asking, where's Santa Claus? Where's the gifts? Where's the Christmas tree? I said, Santa is banned from China. <laughs> They're like, what? I'm like, they banned him, man. They banned him. And, uh, you know, <sighs> Hopefully this show doesn't get banned. Uh, anyways, so today is the last show of the... Let me make sure. I think, yeah, yeah, the last show of 2020. And what a year. <laughs> I think everybody's got to say what a year. You know, it's a... Uh, I don't... I'm not... You know, it's, it's like a, I'm just hoping this year was over already. But uh, we made it. We're alive. We got to appreciate every day we're alive. We got to appreciate our health, our f- loved ones, our family. There's been a lot of death, a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of, a lot of trauma this year. You know, I, I talked to Brendan in our community. We had a little catch up call and he, he was we're recapping a year. It's like a volcano and he hit the volcano when I got to Manila. Coronavirus. What else was there? It's even a notes riots police riots you know riots fires in california elections i mean jeez what a year we are not going to forget this year so i thought we would end this year on on a, on a high or be a planner you know shlomo he's my good good friend we used to be co-hosts together in china business cast john's picked that show up and he has uh, Simon and some other amazing hosts there. We were on episode 100 lately. So definitely check out China Business Cast if you're interested in that. But uh, we're not doing that anymore. We are uh, on our own. I'm still here at GFA and our things. But Shlomo has found his passion in helping people with their financials. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, <laughs> it's I'm not. that's my weaker point. Uh you know, I'm an artist. I don't. I'm not good with the Excel, but Shlomo is, and we brought him on the show. It's the end of the year. You know, this is a great time for you to think about the new year. Start with a clean slate, and uh, I'm gonna have a Snickers. But while I have the Snickers, let's tune into the show. Shlomo, globalfromasia.com/free financial self, and then after the show, we'll share a little bit more about some of the years, next year's plans for the community. How about that? So we're going back on Amazon. We're starting our e-commerce business. I'm partnering with a factory. I'm not going to be as transparent, but I will be transparent about the bank I use. And it helped me get the Seller Central account. Mercury.com. I applied online. Didn't need to go to the U.S. Didn't need to apply. We got the tax ID, the statement online, submitted to Amazon Seller Central, and we're approved. So it works. And... It gets virtual debit cards, physical debit cards, online interface, basically almost no fees, no application fees. Of course, there's a few fees, but banks, you know, compared to most other banks, is so super affordable. They are supporting the show too. So if you do use our link, globalformasia.com slash mercury, you get some cash and we might get some cash and uh, it's a win-win. So I hope you enjoy the show. And if you want, if you need some kind of US bank or banking solution, I'm always and with these solutions, it's hard to call them banks, but it's been amazing so far. We, you know, and they are supporting the community. Check them out. Globalformasia.com slash Mercury for the special bonus. Thank you. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Shlomo. I know it's a pleasure to have you on. We we were co-hosts together in China Business Cast. They said three and a half years. Wow. Time flies. Indeed. And yes. uh, and we're many years before that in the startup startup community in Beijing and China and blogging and content creating and community. Um, so you're you're currently in Israel, right? I'm currently in Israel, indeed, yes. And yes. Uh, 
and uh, working on free financial self, which is I know it's been a big passion for you, even even when I first knew you. You know, helping um, even with our podcast, our 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 projects we did. You were always the one that kind of helped keep the organization of the finances and the strategy, and uh, that's what you're doing. <laughs> doing now so it's really great um do you do you mind uh, you know, adding to that or putting in a little bit more of what you're up to shlomo thanks again for coming on the show sure it's it's actually amazing being here and and again you know kind of co-hosting with you so thank you so much for inviting i yeah. i really so a bit about what you said of of what i do so indeed um Personal finance, investment, and travel been a passion of mine since I was uh, a very small child. And free financial safe self uh, brings in all those things. What I want to do is help uh, people who work remotely to organize their money so they can reach financial freedom faster. That's basically the idea. Um, I, I've been, I've been, let's say. Investing and and working on my finances as an adult for the past fifteen or sixteen years, uh, be learning and failing like everybody else. Um, but that w- what was important for me is not um, money for the sake of making money, uh, which sounds a bit odd. I, I I'm sure, but more of aligning it with with the perfect lifestyle that I want for myself and my family. Uh, and I'm happy to say that nowadays we do live that lifestyle. Uh, we work on, we go on workations uh, every year or even twice a year sometimes for a few months. Uh, so we're location independent. Uh, we homeschool our daughter. So everything is very flexible. And this is what fit us. And basically this is what I'm, I'm teaching other to do, others to do the same through their finances. Great. Yeah, it's very important. It's totally important. And and it's year end, so it's even more important. I think, you know, um, we're at the end of 2020. I think a lot of us are happy to have an end of this year. It's been a uh, very different year probably for most of us. Um, and we should plan, right? Planning is important. You know, I think everybody does this at the end of the year, you know, thinking about the new year, projects, um, yep. businesses, their personal and finance, right? So it's a very important thing to do uh, and perfect timing for, for you to come on and share with us. <laughs> it's the highlight of the year, thinking about your New Year's resolutions and, and finances. So you're closing one year and opening another one and hopefully for everybody, uh, a much better one than it used to be. Although maybe, you know, it's maybe true. an online space, I might be I might be wrong. Uh, and people who are listening now saying, uh, I I killed it on, on 2020 because true. everybody stayed at home and bought stuff. So I don't know. But yeah. uh, generally There's- speaking to the rest of the world, it's been hard. <laughs> There have been some that people don't, you know, I think a lot of people don't like to show off, but I have heard uh, from others and seen in Amazon, you know, and selling online, of course, you have to be in the right category, but if you're selling in the right category right now online, yeah, you're, you're probably having one of your better years ever um, for sure. So, so yeah, hopefully we can keep it. I know we've been preparing for this show for a while and talking back and forth, Um I think you know these the listeners, the people you've come to our events, and you know you've been a community. So they're a little bit more on the product business side or the trading side. So maybe we can yep. keep that in mind. But I think just as general help for uh, any entrepreneur, business owner, you know, in this in the in the space. So, what, you know, what would you you know? Maybe we can give them some tactics, some ideas. Um, mm-hmm. Start with the. What do we open up a new Excel spreadsheet? Of course, there's softwares. I, I mean, what what should somebody be doing now? It's you know coming to the end of the year. Sure. Um, so so I'll give. I have a, a a giveaway at the end, and then for to help with that, but we'll we'll mention it later. That can help with the things that you mentioned. Uh, however, uh, let's maybe talk about things that are, you know, the common issues that people have when dealing with their finances. And what I see from people, my clients, my audience, is that they're putting their uh, all their eggs in one basket. And specifically for business owners and entrepreneurs, their business is so, so important for them. And I totally get that as, as, a, as a business owner myself. However, 
you need to treat your business as another investment. There is a return that you expect to get from that investment, um, and that's supposed to support the life that you want for yourself. So I encourage people to look at a, uh, a broader a broader way of their life and their business. You have one investment, very important one, which is your business, but you have your life and your, let's say your personal uh, money should also be invested and work for you at the same uh, at the same time. And the bottom line is, I don't think that all your money and investment should go only in the business. I think it's too risky. Um, of course, there are exceptions and you need to look to every every uh, case by case. But basically, think of it in a, in a broader way of, of your business. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, separating business and personal. Like, I think one tactic, or, it sounds obvious, but I think you probably would say pay yourself first or budget your your living you know your salary your payment pay i think that's probably what you know you would say right put that's probably the first step is take how much you're going to make out of this business is that maybe a good step to separate uh, it's, yourself? Def- it's definitely a good step to separate um i so when you asked that i didn't think about the actual technicalities it goes without saying you know you should separate that um and understand uh, how much you get from your business? What's the return that you got from that? And how does that support? Uh, how does that support what you do? So when you separate this, you are able to. You, it's, it's much easier to do that. I do every month, um, monthly. calculating monthly, uh, calculating my net worth to see where I'm heading with my finances in life. So I can start seeing now. Doing it for three, four years now. I spot trends of seeing what's working what's not working so that business is building up your net worth or not building up your net worth which is not good of course but when you're doing it month by month by month you get that trend and see "Mm, i am i doing this things right or do i need to change things uh for the for the future and and starting in the new years of course wonderful uh time to do that you you can sum up your whole year and see what happened and what you ch- what you should change yeah so i think the next question probably is how many months should you budget i guess it depends on your risk tolerance but it probably at least have a half a year of you know costs to be covered i think it's bill gates that says he likes to keep a year and a half of salaries up in the yeah bank, uh, opinions know? opinions vary between th- Three months to a year. I didn't know about uh, what you said about uh, eighteen months, but uh, that that makes sense. So it's really the the risk uh, the risk tolerance there. <clears throat> but you know, it's also a matter of understanding how much you're flexible with your expenses and where you live. Let's say that you're now living in an expensive country and you can uh, hop on to a you said many people are are in Asia, so this already might happening. They they live in a on a lower budget, and that works for them. And maybe they can optimize their expenses even more. Or or I don't know if they hold a, an apartment somewhere, you know, somehow remotely Airbnb or something like that. So you can always play with these things to to uh, improve the. Uh, stabilness of your of your life, basically of your of your finances. Yep, yep. Um, it sounds good. So, so hopefully, so I guess a couple of action points just to keep you know tactics. It sounds obvious, but yeah. I'll, I'll I'll be honest. I bet you I know I talked to some people. We don't do this, but you know how much do you need per month personally. You know if you're going to pay yourself in the business, put that on a budget, and then. How much do you need to pay to keep your business operating? You know, like what's – I think it's a slang word is what's your nut. I learned it from some like New York business movie maybe. Like, do people but what's know your, what's your monthly know cost? How much your they fixed cost? Exactly. Yeah. But do people know how how much return they get on their uh, e-commerce business? Is this a common thing? Uh. I think people look at some, there's some softwares that automatically pull in your uh, data from Amazon and then it gives yep. you an idea of your, um, 
I think one common number is return on advertising, R O A S, advertising mm-hmm. spend, mm-hmm. ROAS, mm-hmm. I think, R O A S, and uh, sort of you know how much you're spending on ads and how much you're selling. You know, so cost of return on advertising. But uh, a lot of times we just do these back of the <clears throat> back of the envelopes where we are, we spent about this much and we had this much in our bank account. Now you know, I think that's. I'll speak for others. Uh, a lot of people are that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I understand. Uh, yeah. So again, going back to see it as an investment, see how much you can get back from it. 10%, 20% a year, 40% a year, 200% a year. I don't know what the numbers are. I don't have an e-commerce business, but this is another way, another way to look at it. At the end of the day, uh, what we all want and what I teach is being able to control your numbers and then and then um you know take your money to the next level okay it, yeah what would you say is some targets or what, what do you think somebody should look at i mean as a target uh targets let's think about it so um i think that people should as i mentioned should go and understand what their net worth is and do this uh, monthly or the minimum every three months to figure out what the trend is, okay? How much you are worth. That's really, really important. Um, then uh, going for, um, you know, thinking long-term about your plans. Yes, you have your business now. This is what you do. But does that support what you, uh, the lifestyle that you want for yourself on the longer term? Okay, um, so do you want to retire in Thailand? Do you want to go to Manhattan? This is something, and that will obviously influence your business. Okay, you might not making enough, or you're making more than enough, and and that's okay. So you need to balance these. I think these things are very very important, and and can really make it very clear also for your business of where you want and need it to be. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, that's um, that's helpful. And then, and, um, uh, and it's funny that um, I I wrote my note for the show, and uh, you mentioned separating the finances. Um, and I wrote on the notes uh, for the next tactic, so you know where your personal and business money is going, controlling your numbers. Mm-hmm. So this is exactly what you're saying: categorizing it. Um, understand what are the needs and what want personally and in terms of the business um, what's really essential so this is the needs and what is kind of you know nice to have Mm -hmm. all right Um, and then probably like what's typical a a year plan you know what what do you usually suggest for forecasting or planning so with the business it's with the business, it's more of a short-term planning. So maybe it will be uh, one to two years, especially with e-commerce. But <laughs> with life planning, I would say very, very long-term as much as possible because that will make a difference, on a huge difference on your finances. The more you anticipate, you basically save and make much more money uh, on the longer term because of the compounding uh, effect. So the more time you have, the better. So if you plan only for three, four years ahead, um, then you can make only some kind of investments, which is a shame. But if you'd say, I have a goal 10, 15 years from now, even more, you can take advantage of so many other options that make me make you so much more money. So in my opinion, this is, this is really essential. All right. Um, We'll get to investments later, I think, is, but I would like to talk about what kind of investments you mean or are common or, or typical. Um, sure. But let's maybe stick on the planning stage for now. So we're like, yeah, separate personal business, calculate your net worth, uh, figure out your monthly costs, and make yep. so for a business side, one to two years, like personal as long as possible. And this would probably be on a monthly basis. Like, um, you know, everybody likes to know no. software. Everybody likes to know software. There's zero. There's QuickBooks. I mean, of course, there's Google Sheets. Um, especially I use for Google Amazon. Sheets. 
I actually oh, use Google, Google Sheets. Sheets. I do Google Sheets. Oh, wow. uh, it works the best. You know what's the reason, and that might be a problem for people here too, is that a lot of my... Uh, so I have accounts in many places. So if you're US-based, yes, it's very easy. You can automate, uh, I think, almost everything. But if you're not, so if you have accounts in several countries, several currencies, that makes things a lot, lot harder. And I've been looking for a few years now for a tool that makes that. And here and there, there are tools that claim to do it. But uh, of course, they can't support or they don't support they say they, you know, they say they support. We support uh, thirty thousand financial institution. Great, but my financial institution is not there, and then I need to find a solution right there. So if you have the more common one, great. If you have the less common one, or if you're from a, let's say, a smaller country like me from Israel, then the solution might not be out there, and you need to do everything manually. So Google <laughs> spreadsheet is my best friend for now. Nice. Okay, and. Um, I don't want to put, you know, there's probably templates or formulas and systems in there. Maybe you work with your clients on it or, you, you know, um, I yes. don't know what you're willing to share on yes. that, but, um, but yeah, you can probably I, have multiple tab. Oh, you really? Okay. So, um, part of the roadmap that I work with clients and, and teach people, uh, one step out of that is called control your numbers. And on that step, yeah. It's, I teach people how to, again, calculate their net worth. There are a few ways to do it. So some people uh, prefer to do it uh, on another way than, another, than like in, in one way than another. Um, but basically I teach them this, then I teach them how to calculate their cash flow and categorize their expenses. And then seeing in there, what are, I, I just spoke about it, the, the needs and wants, what are the things that you really need? What are the things that you want? And then maybe eliminate them. You can do the same thing for your business, the net worth just for your business. It's the net worth of your business. It's the cash flow of your business. Uh, what are the needs and wants? And you basically can create a, let's say a plan just for your business. I encourage people to do it also for their life and kind of have this mini plan for the business inside their life plan, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but you can also do it just for your for your business. Uh, I'll share at the end, I have a spreadsheet, uh, a Google tool that I made to calculate how much your net worth. It's really easy to use and I'm, I'm happy to share this with the audience. Wow, that'd be amazing. Thanks, thanks so much, Lomo. All right, um, let's, let's keep moving. Um, so then Google Sheets, which is awesome because, you know, obviously that's free too. But I mean, I know Amazon sellers or e-commerce sellers, it's a little bit harder because we have the high frequency, small amount B2C sales. So uh -huh. maybe we could use both. I mean, there's also maybe your personal spreadsheet and then, of course, your business spreadsheet. There's yes. more. There's a more detailed sheet maybe, you know. It's round numbers here for the forecasting. I mean, there's probably different spreadsheets. There's more. There's actual and forecast, but we're we're talking about making a forecast, right? So we're looking maybe at the past numbers, making a round, you know, zero, you know, just zeros here, right? We're not like getting exact. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you can you can do that. Um, the thing is this: the the main thing that you want to learn is what's the return on your investment. And yeah, you said the return on advertising, but basically what's the return of your business? Mm -hmm. um, and then you can keep, you know, compounding it and recalculating it and make a forecast, assuming things are as good or even better than as they used, than, than it is, as they used to be. But until you don't know that number, it's really hard to make a forecast. So you need to have some kind of data. If you're just starting out, you have to, you have to um, guesstimate, but it's not as accurate, of course. Yep. Well, sure. So we should look at our trailing data, right? So try to get some averages from our previous year to year and then extrapolate that into the future. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And you can expa extrapolate it with uh, if, once you know the return, you can basically do that and then you can decide, okay, I am putting this money back into the business or I am diversifying and putting it in other investments or taking it home and then invest it as a, as a personal investment. It really depends. This is what I spoke at the beginning of, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I think there should be a few baskets because 
Um, business works, it grows, but it can also, uh, things change and you want to mitigate those risks. Mm -hmm. Which goes to the next point, right? I mean, I also just put it out, I'm finally making a new video blog, vlog, and um, I called it like my own personal plans for 2021. But I, I talk about Mike, the Mike Tyson quote, we've, we've heard that in startup world, right? Like, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, definitely 2020 was a Mike, I got knocked, Mike Tyson punched me in the face, you know, like I ever had plans. Those, uh, yes. obviously it was a special, very special circumstances year, but we do need to make plans, but then, um, you know, how can we, how do you really predict the future? You know, I guess we have forecasts, we take percentages, we think it's going to increase over time. So we, we put a, a, a higher increase in our sales like what would you suggest as some strategies for you know forecasting so i'll i'll give an example of what happened to us um perfect yeah that's, i think i think, I think it's it, it represents it the best um so we diversify over a few types of investments we don't have the the eggs in one basket and when covid-19 hit around mid march market started uh, the going down and down and down and down and down and you see you know the, the money vanishing it's like okay um, was I worried to be completely frank no I was not worried and the reason is because I know how the markets are doing long term i can't say it was fun seeing the numbers going down okay let's let's separate those two things but it wasn't mm. that i'm selling like crazy and like going i don't know what to do i can't sleep at night the most important thing is that you want to sleep good at night now i know of other people that told me i i can see those numbers going down they sold their portfolio and you know three weeks later everything started going up and we're basically back up and even better than, than the yeah, year start. Above. Okay. Yeah. Um, so to some extent, you need to trust the, it's funny to say this, to trust the market and, you know, trust the statistics and things that happened will keep going. It doesn't guarantee that this is what will happen, but there's some likeliness, uh, 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 even a high likeliness that this is, this will happen. Um, so how do you mitigate this? Uh, you still need to look at long-term. You have to look at long-term and trust this because if not, it's really, really hard. It's really, really hard. And going back to putting the money in the business and then you get a punch in the face, I agree. If this is the only thing where your money is and sales went to zero, yes, you're in trouble. You should have um, got ready in advance for situations like this um, with other investments, with, uh, with uh, other um, um, emergency funds, um, maybe part-time regular job, maybe you have a spouse and she's working, something, okay? Uh, going all in is good when it's working. It's a disaster when it's not. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, risk, re risk, reward and um, diversification, but also like, I think what I'm thinking about summarizing is investing, you have to think long term and there's going to be the downs and there's going to be the ups. But yeah, I, I mean, I still remember the March. I still, I, I was, it was, like, I did feel like the world was ending in March, at least for me, mid-March. I mean personally and, and business was uh, was insane like amazon to shut down receiving inbound shipments for non-essential items we were all you know i mean people were just thinking to you know give up or i mean some categories are totally crushed like travel products yes. you know mm -hmm. uh you know like summer summer things you know like you know going outside you know it's similar to travel but you know like summer kind of outdoor. products outdoor i mean these guys these kind of categories got crushed. I mean, um, for sure. And uh, I, I know some of these people. So, Mike, what uh, about diversifying in between categories? Um, it's not foolproof in this case because everybody were hit or almost everybody. But maybe that's 
something to do in the business. Yes, I'm in outdoor, but I also do medical equipment. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, pre-COVID. It wasn't really something most people would say to do because unless you're a big seller, because it's about focus, right? And you got to know your yeah. product. You got to know your market. It's kind of a lot of time and investments. So maybe in a post-COVID world, so maybe there will be that idea of diversifying categories. But at least pre-COVID, we all said um, to really focus on focus on one niche, you know, because that's your advantage. You get to that's know this. Expertise. Yes. Yes. That's how you can make value. I would still uh, put something on the back burner, either as a business diversify among categories or have some kind of other investments well, yeah, or like, a side job that I can rely on if things you know, go like, down. Uh, Another cat, what I've kind of been saying a little bit is try to also have, um, you know, podcasts or info products or services on top of your product. You know, um, we're, we're, I, I mean, I, I think you also like Gary Vee or the whole idea of um, media and commerce. Like I've said this a few times in the shows, but you're um, selling a product, but you're also a brand, which is selling experience. So you could teach people how to, teach people in that category, you know, online training or blogging. Um, you know, you could uh, make a books, you know, uh, you could also do services in the category, you know, you could, uh, you know, diversify in that way instead of going to multiple categories. But it might always yep. be easier for most Amazon sellers to just do another category because to do a uh, service or a, you know, information product is another type of mindset as well. Right. But, that's another way right. people would think about it. And I've seen really good sellers, they build out a, a true website and a true brand. You know, like we, we said it too also in the, in this in this uh, podcast is we're trying to build true true brands, not not just uh, Amazon brands. Um, mm -hmm. And that could be another way to diversify. It's risky well. from Amazon to build uh, and um, to only trust them because then they eat you out. Yeah, exactly. So... Okay. Um, yeah, so we're getting here. Let's maybe um, maybe move towards the investments. So, you know, I'll be honest. I think you know me too. I, I usually double down on my, my business and my projects. You know, I'm always investing in business. Uh, I, mm -hmm. But I would like to hear some of your other strategies. When you, say, you know, you said earlier in the podcast, uh, investing. What, yeah. do you, what do you think are some good ways for entrepreneur business owners to, in, to invest? Um, invest. So, um, people thinking about investment of, I want my money to work for me. And when you're saying for me, what is, what it is that is for you, what it is that you want. And I'm, I'm going back to the long-term planning and I, I'll speak about the specific investments, um, in a minute, but you want your investments to support your long-term life plans. That's the most important thing. We want to align the finances and investments with your future desired lifestyle. Mm. Okay? This is how we get the most control and clarity of where we're at, where we're going, and where we want to get at the end. What's okay. our goal? So I'll give uh, a few examples. Um, if I'm thinking, if I have little kids and I know that I want to help them with college in 20 years or 18 years, and, and I'm thinking about this and like, oh, okay, I can just, you know, uh, um, it, it's not urgent. I still have 18 more years. Uh, they were just born. But instead of that, and, and then, you know, uh, three years, two years before college, like, oh my God, I need whatever crazy amount of money you need for a college. Um, and then you get into loans and, and basically you don't know how to deal with that. But if you start very early, you know in advance how much, you can estimate how much money you need with this inflation and everything. Uh, but you can double down on investments that make higher returns long-term. Let's say the American stock market, S&P between seven to 10% a year, depends how you count, uh, inflation, inflation, non-inflation, but you can uh, you can get ready for that and make 
even make a lot of money going towards your uh, uh, future goal of that. So you take that money every month or every six months or every year and save and invest that. And you know that this is for the bucket of college for your kids. Okay, that, that, that's an, a, a thinking, a way to think about this. Um, but there are other ways to, to uh, you know, to think about uh, investments. Let's say that I want to have um, a trip with my family every year, okay? Um, and I want to do this for the next 15 years because it's really important for me. It's part of who we are. We travel a lot. Um, and it is, it's an expensive trip. It's, it's an expense, okay? However, now, my strategy here for, you know, let's say that you're, you're going for trips in 10, 15 years and you already try to save for them now is that the, the returns will be very nice, but they can be even better with other types of investment. Think about uh, crowd investing. Think about investing in other websites. Uh, think about P2Ps, all these kind of things that you can diversify mm. to. Um, however, they are more, they are, they are riskier, of course, right? Um, but the goal is not that important. Meaning, if I don't have money for my child's college, that's a bad thing, assuming they want to go to college. <laughs> but if you won't make a trip one year because the investment went down, okay. But you still are able to get, uh, you know, you're still able to enjoy a higher return over the years with a higher risk to that goal. So the, the, these these are the kind of thing you can think about when you when you plan. Um, yes, you can go and put uh, your your money in in uh, you know in different investments and just let it go. But if you think about your life goals and future expenses that makes things makes much more sense and much easier as example i know that we supposed to change our car in about two years so i found um a crypto backed um crypto back uh, platform called uh, oh. nexo and they pay eight okay. percent over the money that I put in there. Did I put a lot of money there? No, cool. but I put enough money. So in two years, I'll have enough to buy that car. And I'm making money for that. I already put this in advance. Okay. Now, it's not foolproof because that platform might go bust. I don't know why. They seem pretty stable now from what yeah, I checked I from all the dealers that I made. But it's not the only investment that I have. Um, uh, and it's, it's a portion of what I need. And, and you know, even if I'm not going to buy a car in two years because I won't have the money, so in three years I can do this, okay? So, so there, there is a, a way to play with this, uh, with this deadline, okay? okay? But this is a, this is a matter, this is a, an example of aligning your future expense to what you need to do today to make it happen and also make money along the way instead of, you know, I don't want to think in two years, oh, I need, now I need to buy a car and put a, 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 the whole all money in advance. Now I'm making money along the way uh, and plan for this. All right. Does all of that make sense? Makes sense. It makes sense. I like it, man. Um, I, I like sharing some of those, uh, those strategies. And yeah, I mean, it's about, I think what you're saying is you're, you're also diversifying and you're even thinking, you mentioned they might go bust, they might disappear, I might lose... Of course, it, you don't want that to happen, but you're, that that exchange might go bankrupt. You know, like I was literally talking to a friend uh, just before this podcast about MT Gox. You know, and uh, I met somebody at Starbucks, and uh, when MT Gox was around, I don't know if you know that exchange. It's it's a bankrupt exchange. They were one of the first uh, exchanges for crypto for Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and uh, they. Again, I haven't followed it lately, but they basically disappeared or they went bankrupt. Or if you had money in the in it, you lost it. Um, they they went bankrupt for whatever reason. And mm -hmm. uh, that that person we saw in Starbucks every day trading on MT Gox, he stopped showing up when that happened. We we wanted to ask him, and I feel really bad because he I can't imagine he he probably had most of his money in there, you know. So wow. you know I. Wow. <laughs> 
that's also the lesson for crypto is you don't keep all your money on the exchange. You, you could take it out to a, a cold wallet, you know, and take it out. Um, Listen, but, I have uh, other examples. Um, people, yeah, go ahead. Please. So, you know, uh, crowd investing. I invested in a few crowd investing platforms and as much due diligence that I've done over these platforms, two out of the four that I invested in uh, were a scam. That was very sad to lose that money, and now there is the pursuing them, and yes, it makes progress. Um, but I lost there. Did that change my lifestyle? Did that influence my life so much? No, it didn't. It was sad losing it. I hope I'll get that money back. But that was thinking, okay, I'm feeling okay putting that much money in there uh, and take that risk for the high return. But it's not the only thing that I invest in. Yeah, I think I think I think that's the main point is it's diversification. Whether it's your you know categories in Amazon or your investments in uh, in different um, you know alternative investing, which has a higher ROI, right? You can make a heck of a lot more money than putting it in like a money market savings account in a bank, which might even go negative. I don't know. It, I don't even know if yeah, negative will ever happen, but uh, they seems like it's in Europe. Yeah. It happens in Europe. If you have a, if you're investing in Europe, this is what you get. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. But if you want to go to the more traditional things, then you know you go to Western uh, stock markets, like the, especially the U.S. And you're thinking long term. It's very likely that you get the returns that are there on on the data that is out there and the statistics. Uh, but this this goes specifically with this one. It's only if you're really going long term, like the example I gave about college, a down payment for a house in 10 years, things like that. Mm. Um, if you're going to shorter ones, yes, you'll have to go through the cycle. And if you need the money when the cycle is down, that's a problem. Yep. Um, speaking about it, another one is I, I'm invested in uh, HSBC insurance. And I can't, if I take out the insurance, I'll lose like most of the premium you know that you're kind of locked in long term and even if you uh cancel it and want the money it takes 60 days to get the check in the mail you know so wow. yeah i mean um there's definitely what are less the returns they're, they're saying they get uh, i mean it's not really a return it's more like a whole life insurance life insurance okay it's a life insurance so yeah, it's, life it's, insurance. A, it's a different product for uh, catastrophe that you have in your life, but it's not that yeah. you're getting the returns. Uh, this is another way of diversifying yourself. I mean, if your family will need you one, uh, if you're gone, God forbid, then then this is something that you will need. But 60 days kind of sound, you know, <laughs> they will need that money. So <laughs> something to look into there. Well, no, no. I mean, if I want to cancel it and get my premium. Oh, I, oh, 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 I get if it. If I want to cancel it and then get the money out. It takes 60 days. So there's still some um, savings component into this. Got it. Yeah. All right, Shlomo. Well, we're getting, you know, it's, it's been a great conversation. I think we should start to, you know, start to wrap up. But I would love to learn more, you know, maybe share what you're working on and, and how people, how, how you can help some listeners. A lot has been going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So, so I... Uh, basically had one program which is which I'm running uh, with the name free financial self program but it became instead of a three months program I now have uh, a three day program a three months program and a yearly program so okay. it really you know uh, fits for different people at different stages of where they are yeah. um, and just now and it's the first time I'm saying it publicly, I'm opening an online group uh, financial coaching for okay. people who wants to get it to the next level. It's a monthly, it's a monthly call with a group support uh, nice. where people can ask great. questions um, and basically make progress with their finances. You know, they, they of course do the work at home, but they at least have some guidance and have somebody to to work with um, on an ongoing basis. So okay. these are a few things that's happening right now. And the last thing is that I'm writing a book, uh, which is oh, supposed congrats. to come out in the summer, I hope. Uh, 
So yep, that's that's another thing. So yeah, a lot is going on. I'm a sucker. I buy I I buy almost all the books of my you know friends and guests and stuff. So (laughs) (laughs) I'll let you know when it's going pre sale. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, Thank you. And then of course we can link on the show notes to these different things. But what's the best way for people to to find you or connect with you? So first of all, I want to mention the giveaway that I. I, I mentioned before, yeah, yeah, uh, and this is, uh, this is to know how much you are worth. It's really so important to do that periodically, um, every quarter or preferably every month. Um, so go to freefinancialself.com slash GFAM. So that's global from Asia. M is for Mike. Um, okay, and, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and okay. um, go... Uh, that's especially for the listeners. Go go there and download that one. I, I just got uh, a message from my VA saying that we have some kind of a problem with the server. So maybe just hold on a little bit with this. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me put it in the show notes. I, I apologize about this, uh, no but we'll have it online today. Okay. Um, and more information is freefinancialself.com. And I'm on every social media channel you can think of. Uh, LinkedIn is my name, uh, Free Financial Self page on Facebook, and also my name, uh, Instagram, Free Financial Self. And last one is Twitter, Free Financial SF, because All right. too many characters. <laughs> awesome. Okay. And uh, I'm checking the page. I don't think there's an M, at least right now, but we'll, 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 uh, we'll put the oh. right. It's just GFA for me. Um, just testing okay. it now. So the GFA Which works. Way? Okay. You're, you're faster than me. I didn't. I, I can't chat with my VA right now. Oh, Let's do the no GFA. Problem, Great. No okay. <laughs> well, thank, thanks, Shlomo. I'm really happy, and uh, it's awesome to have you on the, on the show sharing. So, uh, and then Great being I here. hope people take you up on this offer. I mean, it's uh, it's amazing. You always help uh, help me and others, and I know this is. I'm really happy to see you doing what you, what you love to do. So it's great. Thank you very much. Great being here. Okay. Thank you for inviting. Cheers. So, let's start 2021 outright. GFAVIP.com. We are going all in on masterminds, online masterminds. We've actually gotten the best response from our community. We also have private sessions. Andy Lee, you might have heard on the show earlier, he's doing a special exclusive drop shipping for 2021 session just for our members, not not a public. But besides those sessions and our, our online courses library, we also are doing these masterminds at mastermind.gfavip.com where we have drop shipping, Amazon FBA, B2B trading, influencers, and we're trying to adding more times, more groups, usually five to six people. We have some software to help that go. and being part of that would support the show but i also support you and we want you to su- succeed we hope this content has helped you you know it's over seven years 300 and i can't even lost 339 shows gfavip.com apply application only we want to just know a little bit more about people before they get in and then we want to work with you to succeed hope to see you there bye bye. all right thank you shlomo for sharing them eat my Snickers. I'm still kind of adapting to looking at myself on camera because we're doing a video podcast. I still have a feeling most of you are listening to this because most of the people I talk to listen to this on the audio when they're running. we we'll be eating on a bicycle, walking a dog. But we do do the video so you can watch me eat a Snickers. And... But thank you, Shlomo, man. He's a great friend. And if you really need some help with your financials, I mean, he's a pro, you know, he's based in Israel, you know, they're, they're the best at numbers, seriously, so, and as a compliment, I hope you guys take it that way, but uh, Shlomo is amazing, he's helped me out a lot, and so I said in the intro, I was going to talk a little bit about the new year, mm, let's on a sneaker here, 2021. I mean, we 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 better have a 10x year. You know, some of us have been hit hard. I've, I've talked, I've had some emotional conversations with a lot of you in the community. Uh, you know, separated from families, deaths, businesses collapsing. I know some people have done really well. I mean, honestly, e-commerce has been the boom. I, I some people have had their best years ever, but I know quite a few of you have had a your worst year ever. I mean, for me, it's been traumatic. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm so fortunate I got back with my family. I know some others that have been separated from their families for most of the year. So let's make it up next year. 
what we've you know we had to skip to try to no, we had to skip the cross border summit it would have been our fifth annual 2020 but we didn't move the online but what we are doing is masterminds we have our vip community gfa vip a few of you are involved in that and supporting it is paid part of what we do but it does support this show it you know it's just me you know you just see me here but I, there's a big team i mean at least i think it's a big we have about 10 people here uh mostly doing content marketing content creation but they do help with this show it supports the thing we do we you know especially missing the event so if you we're doing masterminds uh, we, we did a couple in December and we're starting to make groups and we're, we're making more groups and we're doing U.S. times friendly and we're doing Asia, Europe time friendly and we got topics on Amazon FBA, which has been a hot one, drop shipping, uh, you know, B2B trade, sustainability with Fernanda. So, you know, and new ones are forming. So if you want to get involved with that, it is a good time starting the year off right with a good little group of five or six people. And it's also the other groups happening, so you get this extra energy. It's not just a small group, but you can see others coming in and we're gonna try to interact with each other and have special guests sometimes or special sessions. Um, I know it's not the same as in real life, I understand, but we're all trapped. I mean, I don't know how long 2021 we're gonna be trapped, but we're working to be adopting online as much as we can. It's our new Amazon brand. It's uh, finally got the Seller Central account approved. You know, we're not minority partner. Um, Working with the factory, getting that going. Sorry, I won't be as transparent as uh, the last brand. Um, you know, there's a few different reasons for that. But, you know, we got the book, E-Commerce Gladiator, actually sitting here right next to me. So you can check out that whole story. Whoa, there it is for those watching on video. But, um, you know, and I'm trying to get to Thailand by hopefully this summer, you know, to, I'm an English teacher here for my two kids. You know, I never thought I was going to be an English teacher. There's, there's, you know, I, I respect English teachers. You know, I have friends that are English teachers, but it's, I don't have patience to be any kind of a teacher, especially like a language teacher, you know, especially like I, I don't have patience. So that's a challenge for me. Um, and I've, you know, they, they test my patience, kids, kids test patience, but probably have to be another half a year with English teacher until I get them down to Thailand because I'm basically the only English speaking person besides my wife, uh, you know, which isn't native English. So I'm my, I'm doing my best. And all of us are, we have to adapt. Let me take another bite of Snickers. But, you know, I hope, I hope everybody's doing well. We want to do cross border summit in 2021, but I don't know if anybody does any, doing events right now can plan for next year. And usually we like to at least give it, I mean, I think one, we did four months in advance, but usually six months, even earlier. But I mean, a lot of us are excited about it. We can't, we really can't wait to do it. It's going to be better than ever. We're going to plan, but I don't even know if it's going to be able to be done in 2021. It might be a 2022 thing, honestly, because we want to build it up. We want to get amazing speakers. We actually want to make extra events before, extra events after, main event in the middle. You know, we want to make this thing amazing. So, you know. That's hard to tell you right now, but, you know, I'm just grinding here. I love creating content. We got we got a network of other sites, you know, and I got our e-commerce business starting up again um, and the membership and the masterminds. So I hope you would love to get involved behind the scenes. I know some of you enjoy these shows, you know, popping out of your earbuds and going onto a computer and reaching out to us would be pretty cool get more people involved in our online community. So with that, we're over and out for now. Take care. To get more info about running an international business, please visit our website at www.globalfromasia.com. That's www.globalfromasia.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our iTunes feed. Thanks for tuning in.